morning so late? It's almost dark. I were planting out to the forest edge. Oh, so you're done then? I, the farm is seated. Uh, the boys in bed yet? No, well, they will be soon. Pray now for a fair summer. Are you well? <sighs> I am. It is a rabbit stew. <laughs> so it is. Uh, Al? Oh. I. you come so late, I thought you'd gone to Salem in the afternoon. Why? I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. I thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why don't you let her? You heard me tell her that I didn't want her going to Salem anymore. I forbid her to go, and she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. Court? What court? Aye, it is the proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says, weighty magistrates of the general court, and at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Why? She's mad. I would to God she were. There be 14 people in the jail now, and they'll be tried, and the court will have the power to ha hang them too, she says. Why? they never hang. The deputy governor promises hanging. If they don't confess, John, the town's gone wild. I think Mary Warren speaks of Abigail as though she were a saint to hear her. She brings the other girls into the court, and where she walks, the crowd will part like the Sea of Israel. And folks are brought before them, and if Abigail screams and howls and falls to the floor, the person's clapped in the jail for bewitching her. It is a black mischief. I think you must go to Salem, John. I think so. You must tell them it is a fraud. Aye, it is. It, it is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. And tell him what she said to you last week in her uncle's house. She said it had naught to do with witchcraft, did she not? She did. She did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. They must. It is a wonder that they do believe her at all, actually. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. You cannot keep it, John. I know I cannot keep it. I will think on it. Good, then. Let you think on it. I am only wondering how I may prove what she has told me, Elizabeth. I mean, if, if she is a saint now, I think it's not so easy to prove the girl a fraud, and with the town gone so silly. She told me in a room alone. I have no proof of it. You were alone with her? For a moment alone, I. Why, then it was not as you told me. For a moment alone, I, but then the others come in soon after. Well, do as you wish, then. Woman, I will not have your suspicion. I have I will it. not have it. Well, let you not earn it. You doubt me yet? John, if it were not Abigail that you must go hurt would you falter now? I think not. Now look you! I see what I see, John. You will not judge me any more, Elizabeth. I have good reason to think before I charge for it upon Abigail. And I will think about it. Let you look to your own improvement before you judge your husband any more. John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in bed. Spoken or silent, a promise is made. Besides, I have forgot, Abigail. And I... Oh, spare me! You forget nothing and forgive nothing. I have gone tiptoe in this house all seven months since she is gone. When I have not moved from here to there without, I think, to please you. And still an everlasting funeral marches around your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubted every moment, judged for lies, as though I come into a court whenever I come into this house. John, you are not open with me. You saw her with a crowd, you said. Now... Oh, God, I'll plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, I am open... No more! I should have roared you down when first you came to me with your suspicion. 
but I wilted. And like a Christian, I confessed. Some dream I had must have mistaken you for God that day. But you're not. You are not! And let you remember it. Let you sometimes see the goodness in me. And judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John. <laughs> Only somewhat bewildered. Your justice could freeze beer.